हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ पावर प्लांट इंजीनियरिंग माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर विपुल एम पटेल फ्रॉम डॉक्टर सुभाष टेक्निकल कैंपस जूनागढ़ सो इन टू डेज लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट फ्रॉम द चैप्टर नंबर सेवन ऑफ पावर प्लांट इंजीनियरिंग दैट इज कंडेंस एंड कूलिंग टावर्स इन टू डेज सेशन वी विल लर्न अबाउट डाल्टन पार्शियल प्रेशर लो and connection it with the condensers measurements of vacuum then vacuum efficiency all these things that we will cover in this video lecture so first of all we are going to start dalton's partial pressure law for the understand of the dalton's partial pressure law first of all we have to study about the partial pressure because that word partial pressure is most important for the dalton's partial pressure law so first of all what is partial pressure partial pressure is defined as it is the pressure which each constituent of gas mixture partial pressure is a pressure which each constituent of a gas mixture would exert if it alone occupied the volume of the mixture at the same temperature so try to understand if there are a mixture of gases more than 1 2 3 4 etc the gas is non reactable gases which are not react with each other then we can say the pressure of each gas is equal to sum of the pressure of the gases individual gases So first of all, try to understand the pressure, partial pressure. It is the pressure which can constitute of a gas mixture would exert it if alone occupied at a volume of the mixtures at a same temperature. So temperature will be same, volume, and then mixture of the gas. Now understand Dalton's partial pressure law. So in the thermodynamics, uh, in physics also we can say. and physics and chemistry dalton partial pressure law is stated as the mixture of non reacting gases the total pressure exerted is equal to the sum of the partial pressure of individual gases understand dalton's partial pressure law it state as as that in a mixture of non reacting gases the total pressure exerted is equal to the sum of the partial pressure of individual gases right it is the dalton's partial pressure law the mixture of gases are there and it is not reacting with each other then the total pressure exerted is equal to the sum of the partial pressure of individual gases practically try to understand in the next slide like that the empirical law was observed by john dalton in 1801 this law is related for the ideal gas law you can see in the figure the gases a and b originally occupy in volume v same volume you can see 5.0 liter over here also in a and b in both are 5.0 liter so volume v and at a temperature t so temperature is also constant in both the conditions a and b 20 degree celsius over here also 20 degree celsius now are mixed in the third vessel which is of the same volume and same temperature अगर हम ए और दो ए और बी दोनों को यहाँ पे मिक्स करते हैं एक दूजे से 
at the same volume and same temperature 5 liter and 20 degree celsius then mathematically we can say p is equal to p of a and p of b so p is equal to pressure of a and pressure of b so it is a 8.4 atom it is a p for h2 it is a p for he then 6 plus 2.4 is equal to 8.4 atom then over here it is 1.25 mole of he and 0.50 mole of h2 then we can write 175 mole of gas total mixture of gas h2 plus he understand what dalton's pressure, partial pressure law they want to say it is status as the mixture of the non reacting gases the pressure total pressure exerted is equal to the sum of the partial pressure of the individual gas now for the number of gases if hamare paas more than 2 or 3 se zyada number of gases hai hame uska mixture partial pressure find karna hai then p is equal to sigma pi p is equal to pa plus pb plus pc up to pn agar hum air ki baat karte hai to aur mein kaun sa gases rehte hai oxygen nitrogen water carbon etc so we can write for the air is equal to p air is equal to p oxygen nitrogen water carbon dioxide etc right now in power plant engineering what is the use of dalton's partial pressure law why we are studying this dalton's partial pressure law in the power plant engineering the condenser contains at air mi air and steam mixture so the statement is the pressure of air and steam is equal to the sum of the pressures which constituent would exert if it occupied the same space by itself volume and temperature same then it means pc is equal to pa plus ps means pressure in the condenser is equal to pressure or partial pressure of the air plus partial pressure of the steam the summation of the partial pressure of the air and partial pressure of the steam is equal to always the pressure in the condensers but important thing is the pressure of the air and steam is always equal to the sum of the pressure which constitute to exert but if it occupied the same space by itself remember it so that is the important thing of the dalton's partial pressure law related to the power plant engineering now measurement with of the of vacuum the vacuum in a condenser is usually expressed in millimeter of the mercury and it is the difference between the barometric pressure and absolute pressure in the condenser so in order to know the absolute pressure in the condenser both the vacuum gauge and barometric must be read which one barometric and vacuum gauge so if you are reading the both uh, both the things then the difference you can easily find the difference between barometer and vacuum gauge right then the readings will give the absolute pressure in the condenser understand Barometric pressure is a variable quantity and varies from plus to plus. Hence, it is more convenient for the purpose of the comparison to refer vacuum gauge readings to a standard barometer. So, for the reading of the vacuum and uh, absolute pressure of the condenser, if you have to uh, measure, then we have to compare it both. Which one? Barometer and vacuum gauge. So, for this particular this reason. we have to refer the vacuum gauge reading to a standard barometer because 760 mm of mercury or in place of bar we want to write 1.013321 right this is the measurement of vacuum if anything 
else i want to say then we can say high precision vacuum measurement is an absolute va must when it comes to the evacuation of the heat pumps and air conditioning and refrigeration system also we have to measure the vacuum if we have a fault in our refrigerator refrigerator or air conditioner then the mechanic will come with the vacuum gauges also if you remember right so this type of gauges which enable to remote or vacuum gauges which enable to remote uh, the monitoring via smart sponge tablets are becoming increasingly pop popular in area right so vacuum gauge is also important and uh, barometer is also important all these things are very much important for the measurement of vacuum see standard or corrected vacuum in mm of hg is equal to 760 mm of mercury or we can say 760 millimeter of the mercury minus absolute pressure in condenser in mm of hg then we will get the answer 760 mm of hg minus which is the absolute pressure in the condenser that is the difference between barometric reading and vacuum gauge reading so we have to subtract it from the barometric reading and vacuum gauge reading so since one of the standard atmosphere is equal to 760 mm of hg in place of mm of hg if you want to write in the bar then 1.01 325 bar we can write then one bar is equal to 760 divided by 1.01325 is equal to 750 mm of hg so pressure equivalent of 1 mm of hg is equal to 1. 01325 divided by 3760 so is equal to 0.001333 bar or if we want to write in the kilopascal then can we uh, we can write 0.1333 kilopascal right you can see the vacuum efficiency so in a steam condenser steam power plant we have a mixture of steam and air and total pressure which exists in a condenser in some of the partial pressure exerted by the steam and air understand or not we have already discussed about the condenser we have already discussed about the application of the condenser we have already discussed about the why we are using the condenser in the steam power plant then we have already discussed about the types of condenser and we have already discussed about the advantages and disadvantages of the condenser so i hope you understand in a steam condenser we have a mixture of steam and air so and the total pressure which exists in the condenser in some of the partial pressure which exerted by the steam and air no doubt so with no air present in the condenser with no any air, any type of air leakages in the condenser then it would be equal to the partial pressure of the steam corresponding to the temperature of condenser understand if there is no air present in the condenser if there is no leakages of the air in the condenser then definitely we can say the total absolute pressure in the condenser would be equal to the partial pressure of the steam corresponding to the temperature of the condenser and maximum vacuum would be obtained in the condenser then we can write the ratio of the actual vacuum obtained at the steam inlet to the condenser to the maximum vacuum for the ideal vacuum which could be obtained in a perfect condensing plant so with no air present is called vacuum efficiency try to understand the steam inlet to the condenser to the maximum vacuum which could be obtained in a perfect condensing plant with no air present then and then is called the vacuum efficiency mathematically we can write vacuum efficiency is equal to actual vacuum at the steam inlet to the condenser to or it is the ratio of the actual vacuum at the steam inlet to the condenser to the barometric pressure minus absolute pressure corresponding to the temperature of the condensation or in another language also we can write actual vacuum at a steam inlet to the condenser is equal to barometric pressure minus absolute pressure in the condenser divided by barometric pressure minus absolute pressure corresponding to the temperature of the condensation understand so in both the way we can find the vacuum efficiency of the condenser 
So if the absolute pressure of the steam corresponding to the temperature of the condensation were equal to the absolute pressure in the condensers, the vacuum efficiency would be near about 100 percent. In fact, there will always be some air present in the condenser due to the leakages and dissolved air present in the steam entering the condenser, the value of vacuum efficiency therefore depends upon the quantity of the air removed from the condenser by the air pump. So, we have already discussed about the air leakages in the condensers, air leakages point of the condensers. If there is no any air leakages, we can easily extract all the air by the air pump, then definitely we will get the 100 percent vacuum efficiency. But in fact, there will always be some air present in the condenser due to the leakages. Then we cannot find the vacuum efficiency is equal to 100 percent. So, near about 100 percent, more than 90 percent we will get, but we will not get it at near 100. Understand? Now one more condenser efficiency. The condenser efficiency is defined as the ratio of actual rise in the temperature of the cooling water to the maximum possible rise in the temperature of the cooling water. This is the condenser efficiency. So, mathematically we can write condenser efficiency or efficiency of the condenser is equal to actual rise in the temperature of the cooling water divided by inlet temperature of the steam minus inlet temperature of the cooling water difference or actual rise we can say maximum possible rise we can say. So, efficiency of the condenser is equal to 2 actual rise in the temperature of the cooling water. So, temperature outlet minus temperature inlet. Understand? Divided by temperature of the steam and temperature of the cooling water or we can say inlet cooling water. So, where T O is equal to outlet temperature of the cooling water, T I is equal to inlet temperature of the cooling water and T S is equal to saturation temperature of the steam corresponding to the actual absolute pressure or can say temperature of the steam condenser. So, we will definitely we can find the efficiency of the condenser with the use of this definition and formula of the efficiency. Now, we will see one more example for the same. Steam enters a condenser at 32.88 degree Celsius. So, steam enters condenser we have and with barometric standing at 760 mm of Hg standard a vacuum of 685 mm of Hg was produced now determine the vacuum efficiency. So, what is the formula of vacuum efficiency that we have already seen in this formula actual vacuum at a steam inlet to the condenser divided by barometric pressure minus absolute pressure of the corresponding to the temperature of the condensation. So, we will put it over here. So, what is actual vacuum that is given 685 divided by what is barometric pressure it is 760 minus what is absolute pressure corresponding to the temperature that is 0 0.05 into 750. So, we will get 685 divided by 722.5 is equal to 0 0.9481 or if you want to write in the percentage then we will write 94.81 percentage right. If you want to find the vacuum efficiency with the use of the different another formula which is over here the barometric pressure absolute pressure in the condenser and barometric pressure minus absolute pressure in the corresponding to the temperature of the condensation. So, we will write the 685 divided by 760 minus 37.5 that we will already get from over here for the steam pressure tables 30 bar partial pressure of the steam is equal to 0 0.05 bar is equal to 0 0.05 into 750 then is equal to 37.0 mm of Hg we will get it from here and is equal to 7 uh, is equal to 0 0.9481 or if we want to write in the percentage. Same, F, same as before we will get that is 94.81 percentage. So, today it is enough in the next lecture 
we will discuss about the cooling waters sorry cooling towers right so thank you thank you everyone today